Hey guys, it's meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather. The final area of low pressure now hitting California that has atmospheric river moisture with it. That's the final one, and then that's going to mark the end of it, and then the pattern's going to start to shift. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to move to the north, and it's going to run into the Pacific Northwest and B.C., and those are the areas that will receive the bulk of moisture, and then that moisture will come down on that orientation, the northwest orientation, through northern Idaho, um, through Montana, through Wyoming, through parts of Utah, Colorado, and northern New Mexico. So that is what lies ahead. Let me show you some of the totals here over the last 24 hours. So this is Kirkwood. Another 11 inches on top of that 29 they got yesterday. So 48-hour totals of 40 inches. Incredible. Um, that puts them at 352 for the season. Alta picked up another... Um, another 14 to 15 inches in the last 24 hours. That puts them at 399 for the season. They could, they're going to break 400. I've got another 11 inches in my out to forecast over the next two days. Incredible stuff. Let me show you what it looks like here on the... Uh, uh, this is water vapor, and I'll, uh, I'll just mark this feature so you can kind of see them. So this is the last little Pineapple Express branch coming in, and it's feeding this big final area of low pressure. And then that's uh, going to break away and take a southern track towards the four corners, favoring Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. Now behind it, you can kind of already see what's happening. There's some ridging like this. Uh, all this red and orange is drier air, so this type of high-pressure ridging would then begin to move north, and that's going to orient the jet into this area. And so what's going to happen down the road is that these waves of moisture will then hit these areas and then move into the interior. And that's going to be the pattern after this final low pressure. That'll be the pattern through basically um, uh, January 25th, and then after that, I'll show you what's going to happen. I wrote about it this morning on my blog, chrystomer.com. Take a look at it, please. And This is the final AR storm system. The new pattern emerges. I mentioned uh, what's going to happen. There's the flow. Let me show you the jet pattern here. So this is 125. You can clearly see that high-pressure ridging amplification of the jet over the Pacific and influencing the West Coast. But with this type of flow on the jet, favors Pacific Northwest, B.C., Northern Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, brushing Utah, and running into Colorado, and that's 125. Now, again, like I said, after 125, let me take you back. This is potentially what's going to happen. This is late January, early February. Look at the pattern. The indication is that lower atmospheric pressure anomalies take over the West Coast. So after some brief ridging, stormy track moves in, buckling jet across the West, brings the snow back. Now, this is not an atmospheric river pattern. It's not. This is uh, the type of pattern where you take low pressures and run them down and bring in Canadian air across the west, uh, and that would be the pattern. So, and I, I, you know, my colleague, one of my colleagues, Corey Gates, thinks that this is going to be um, a factor for most of February, in fact, and he likes an active February pattern for the west. So, um, all points, uh, everything's pointing towards the, the west becoming active again by late January and running into February. Take a look at it on the blog. Um, I have some commentary on there as well. Let's look at forecast timing. So this is the forecast radar and satellite. There's Tuesday morning at 6. Here comes the southern track low with snow. Colorado, New Mexico, and then it moves out. And then everything now comes out of the northwest. Look at that. Coming down, running off that northwest flow orientation. By Friday, another low hits the Pacific Northwest in B.C. By Friday night, you can see all the snow is up there in B.C., Banff, northern Idaho, northwest Montana, and the Pacific Northwest. All right. Let's go back to um, the blog here. And we'll go into totals. And we're going to start with phase one here. So this is all of today through the 18th. Um, another potential foot there through Tahoe down to Mammoth, another foot up in the in the uh, the Wasatch. In Colorado, we're looking at 8 to 14 inches of snow, maybe more over Wolf Creek, uh, all with that southern track low, probably 8 to 12 through Ski Santa Fe and Taos, and some pretty good numbers starting to build in through Baker and Whistler. So that's phase one. Here's phase two, 119 through 125. Notice very light in California. Everything shifts up to the Pacific Northwest, B.C., Banff. Idaho, Montana, the Tetons, the Wasatch, and into Colorado. In Colorado, we could see another 6 to 14 during that time period. So we're looking at like 1 to 2 feet 
in Colorado over the next nine days. One to two feet over nine days. Another eight to nine in the Wasatch on top of period one, which had 11. So you're looking at potentially 20 inches uh, of snow uh, yet to go in the Wasatch over the next nine days. Northeast. The totals have gone down because the final low very late in the period just doesn't look like it's going to track correctly or it's going to miss in the northeast. So any anyway, you're looking at it probably 8 to 14 inches, maybe more from Mount Washington. You're going to get some wraparound plus another low pressure during the period. So those are the numbers at this point for the northeast. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Still got some action ahead in a shifting pattern as we head into late January. Take care.